Okay, so what I'm wondering though is that there's two, right? Were there like two separate games? Like when this came out. あれは19世紀の終わり厳しい冬のことだった。事件は霧深い深夜のロンドンの街路をひた走る乗り合い馬車の中で起こった。馬車には被害者と容疑者の両名のみ複数の人間がその事件を目撃した。一体誰が想像
It's the only way that we'll be able to remain here in London. I hope I'm up to- I'm, I'm up to scratch? Ah, good morning. Sorry for keeping you. This dude who's definitely not evil. I didn't finish this game, but do you- <laughs> Like, they keep making these, like, kind of, like, important people kind of menacing looking. Like, even the dude from the first game, you know, that very last one? Yeah, he was like, okay, until he kind of wasn't. <laughs> I trust you weren't too exhausted after your long voyage from Japan. Hmm. Seems I'm 1 hour, 12 minutes, and 47 seconds late. My apologies. Oh, no, no, don't mention it. We've never- we, we're never happier than when we're standing around with nothing much to do. How fortunate. So, introductions. I am... M Mael? Mael? Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of the British Empire. Ugh, and I feel like a little mouse under an elephant's foot. Come on, Mr. Naruto, though, don't be a mouse. Oh, um, it's it's an honor to meet you, Lord Chief Justice Strongheart. I'm Ryu Nosuke Naruhodo from the Empire of Japan. Well, Mr. Naruhodo. Welcome to London, the capital of our glorious British Empire. Uh, yeah, thank you. So, what are your impressions of our capital so far? How do you like London? Oh, um, well... Help! I've been so nervous ever since I got here that I can't remember a single thing about the city. It's simply splendid, isn't it, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh? <laughs> that was- okay, that was the wrong person speaking, but yeah. We had a wonderful view of some of London streets from the carriage on the way here from the station. Everything is so... impressive. And grand! I must say, I'm almost lost for words. I'm glad to hear you like it. The city boasts tramways, pipe water, and gas. Even cable supplying electricity. We spearhead every revolutionary new technology in the world. Every visitor to London is astounded. Oh yes, astounded is the word. Thanks for saving me there, Susato. And everyone seems so jolly and full of vigor. Yes. There's much excitement about the upcoming Great Exhibition we will be hosting here in London. Great Exhibition? Cultural and technological achievements from around the globe are to be exhibited here in our great city. It will be the greatest spectacle of its kind in history, and will make Paris's World Fair look like a toy shop. Gosh, I can hardly imagine how magnificent it's going to be. Great Britain's capital is nothing but magnificent. London is the center of the modern world. Even if you do say so yourself. The sun will never set on our great empire. Perhaps it is fate that in these progressive times, we welcome visitors from the land of the rising sun. Um, Lord Chief Justice? I think you were expecting a student of law for this study tour, weren't you? Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Kazuma Asogi, if my memory serves. That's right. The British government has already been telegraphed a full report on the situation. I understand the young man lost his life aboard the steamship. My electricity just went out. That was really random. That's amazing. The news reached him before we even arrived. My country naturally extends its deepest condolences to yours. Oh, thank you. And you honored this appointment specifically to inform me of the news? Yes. We are here in the capacity of envoys from Japan to report the sad news in person. They tell me you Japanese are a people of protocol and courtesy. And I see that it's true. And it is with some regret that I must inform you that the death of the young lawyer means the study tour arrangement can no longer proceed. If you would just hear us out, Lord Strongheart. What do you have to say, madam? 
It's about the study tour. Mr. Naruto here would like to make a proposal. Would he now? Well, <laughs> this is it then. The moment of truth. The thing is, Lord Justice, uh, uh, Lord Strongheart, I was wondering if perhaps you would consider allowing the study tour to go ahead? Don't misunderstand me. Britain would ideally like to see the tour go ahead, but without a lawyer from your country, there's nothing to be done. Well, in that case, w what if there was someone else? Another lawyer from Japan, I mean. Is there something I don't know? Uh, only a single lawyer was invited to Great Britain from your country, and that was Mr. Asobi. At least, that is what I've been led to understand. Well, uh, the thing is, this really isn't going well at all. I just can't seem to find the right words to, to say to this man. Mr. Naruhoto, I could ruin things here if I'm not careful. What am I going to say? If there's someone else here from Japan who could be described as a lawyer, it's... It's me! It's me. I can do it. Is that so? I mean, I don't actually have any qualifications as such, but... No qualifications, you say, and yet you still claim to be a lawyer. I, I, I have acted as a lawyer in court before. Oh, well, only once, as it happens. And I had Kazuma to help me, and I was the accused, but glossing over the details. I've been spending every spare moment on the journey here to Great Britain studying. I've learned all about the all about British law and court proceedings while I was on board the SS Buria. The voyage from Japan is some 50 days, I believe. Not what you might call a full education. To become a qualified lawyer here in Japan, not only do you need a university degree in law, you must also complete several years of training. I realize it's far too short a period of time, but I can't just go back to Japan. Kazuma, Mr. Asogi's journey had only just begun. Coming here on this study tour was all he thought about. I have to carry on and do everything he planned to do. I know it must sound like I have an overly inflated opinion of myself, but I would do anything to prove that I have what it takes. Any test you care to, t to set me. Just one chance. That's all I'm asking for. Please? Hmm. 31 seconds. Sorry? Your opening statement there, Mr. Naruhodo. It was 31 seconds long. Not too brief. Not too protracted. A perfectly judged appeal, I would say. Which is a skill that would stand you in good stead as a lawyer. Oh, thanks. So, you're willing to put those words to trial, are you? Well, I'm all for entertainment. Huh? But let me ask you one thing first, sir. Yes? You say you intend to do everything Mr. Asogi planned to do. Are you firmly set on that path? Well, yes, that's my intention. I see. Am I imagining things? Or did his expression just alter a fraction there all of a sudden? Very well. You have your wish. I'll give you a chance. A test to become a specially certified lawyer. Whether you pass or fail is entirely down to you. Really? So, what form will the test take exactly? Tell me, Mr. Naruhodo, what do you consider the role of a lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So, let's have you defend someone. Huh? Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an apt trial about to begin later today. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as yet, so this will be welcome news. Today? Straight away? If you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty, you'll have passed my test. What could be simpler? Oh, how do I how do I get myself into these situations? Well, could I ask what sort of trial is it, Lord Strongheart? Hmm. 
Yes, good question. Oh, I remember. It's a murder trial. A murder? An extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case, if the defendant is found guilty, he will, of course, be sentenced to capital punishment. Capital punishment? He'll be put to death? Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows without exception. Presumably, you read that much in your short sea-based introduction to British law. We, we can't possibly agree to such a test. We would be toying with a man's life. I am the Lord Chief Justice, and I've decided it's acceptable. But you can't do that, can you? There's no need to over overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. So the defendant may live or die depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, he'll be hanged. Mr. Naruhodo, you've come to be claiming to be a lawyer. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to do a lawyer's job. And you say you intend to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would like to understand just how far you're willing to go in order to make that happen. He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You've fallen silent. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial be begins shortly. I need an answer from you now. What's it to be? What do I say? Do I agree to this absurd test? Yeah, I'll do it. Game won't go unless I do it. Alright then, if I have to give you a decision now, my answer is... I can't do it. I can't get the words out. 15 seconds. Hmm. Your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That was too slow. So, it's as I suspected, is it? Sorry? You have noble intentions, but lack the resolve to see them through. The test is cancelled. Thank you for stopping by. Go and acquire your ticket for passage back to the east tomorrow. This conversation is over. Yes, Lord Strongheart. Thank you for your for offering me a chance. I'm sorry, Miss Susato, but what could I do? It's all right. I understand. You do? It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. But resolve has absolutely nothing to do with it. What are you trying to say, madam? I think what Miss Susato means is that no matter how badly I'd like to be recognized as a lawyer and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his one and only chance at a trial is so, triv so trivially would be utterly unforgivable, and I feel exactly the same way. I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test, as some kind of experiment. A lawyer may fight for his client in court day after day, but for each one of those clients, the particular day they stand in, in the dock may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do that job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Wait, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, was there something else? It's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the Old Bailey from here. If you leave immediately, you should still be there in time. Uh, but, but I just said that I was quite serious in what I told you. The defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him. What? At this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. And if that happens, there's only one possible outcome. He will receive the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to why does it have to be like this? Please don't expect an answer to every question. The cold hard truth of the matter 
is that there is only one person now with a chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. I'm really his only hope. So, what do you say now, madam? Me? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? You said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. And I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. Oh. Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave in 2 minutes and 16 seconds. So, venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. He's gone. Hmm, the old Bailey. If we're going to do this, Mr. Naruhodo, we must leave at once. Okay, let's move. Oh, thank goodness we're in time. There's still 15 minutes until the trial begins. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. I thought my teeth were going to rattle loose. Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver, and there's a, a guinea in it for you. It's one of my favorite lines from the Herlock Sholmes stories, and it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're so pleased. I thought we were going to die, and we had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before the trial started. Yes, I suppose there's that. Anyway, I don't understand it. The court clerk said the defendant should be here, but there's no sign of him at all. So this is the old Bailey. Even this room for defendants is to wait in. Oh, for, even this room for defendants to wait in is grand. Are you alright? I'm feeling tense, that's all. This place gives me the same sense of foreboding that I remember from the Supreme Court in Japan. An oppressive air, almost as if the building itself is going to crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It feels like only yesterday that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you're here to defend is, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. Top of the morning to you, madam. Sir. What are yous doing following me here? Things are fair desperate, are they? I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's the... Either he's... Either he... I, get, I made him, like, Irish or Scottish. <laughs> that's just, like, the dialogue. Maybe he just has a really thick... I know they have different accents, like, depending on where you're from in Britain. Like, the north or the south or the whatever. Sorry. Would you look at those expressionless faces from the east, are you? <laughs> what am I giving... What accent am I giving him? <laughs> oh, we're from Japan, yes. Ah, uh, Japan, is it? Right, say no more. So, how much do you need? No, no, we're just here because... No need to explain, fella. I've been there mys myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name, and all while in a strange, faraway land. Well, actually... Uh, we haven't found a place to stay yet, no. Tis grand, tis grand. Let me start by giving you a thousand guineas. Say nothing now. Uh, a thousand? Please, Miss Susato, you don't have to shout. But a thousand guineas is is enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? Tis nothing to me at all. I like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a rainy day, you see. I have enough wealth to buy the city of London two or three times over. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Well, even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Ah! It hit me in the eye! Don't get me wrong, fella. I'm not giving it to you, no strings attached. I'll be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, tis a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin, you see, is for me good self here. I'll be in the dock. So now, what I want you to do... 
is come along with me and stand there beside me. Officially, you'd be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Oh, well, the thing is, don't worry about a ting. All you have to do is stand up there next to me. Nothing more. Otherwise, you see, the trial is going to start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. The Lord Chief Justice wasn't making it all up. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have to ask, but does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Bluster and blazes, do yous? Do yous not know who I am? Me, one of London's biggest names. No, sorry, we've only just arrived in the city, you see. Hmm, I see. I suppose it isn't altogether impossible. Well, just next to Hyde Park there in the center of London is another beautiful park. Sorry, a park? What? Tis called McGilded Park, full of blossoming flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. I donated it to the city, so I did. An entire park in central London? A city of smiles. That's my vision for London. There's nothing Magnus... Uh, Magnus McGilded. Right? That's his name. Magnus McGilded. Yeah. Wouldn't do for the city and it's... Queer? Queer old people? That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Eh, but now they've the gall to say I'm good for nothing criminal. Oh, I'm a good, I'm a good for nothing criminal. Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with the London police? I ask ya. Ugh. All right, don't pass out, <laughs> uh, Mr. Naruhodo. Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. Um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is, we're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a study tour from Japan, you see. So, if you don't have a lawyer for the trial yet, and and you'd be happy to put yourself in our hands, we'll do our best. What, 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 what was, wait, what was I after saying, wait, what, what was I after saying, you daft idiot? <laughs> I've given you a thousand guineas to stand up there next to me, haven't I? I, I? Well, yes, but I wasn't really offering to just stand up there next to you. Oh, I I think I see what's going on here. Sorry? I know what you're thinking. This chancellor of a fella claims to have more money than the queen. But if that's true, why the blazes can't he hire the finest lawyer in all of England? Because he did it! That's the only explanation! Well, uh, well, exactly, yes, exactly, what now? Well, like you said, if you have all that money but you don't have anyone to represent you in court, there's no other logical conclusion than, than that you're guilty of the charges. Well, you call a spade a spade in the East, so you do. Oh, I'm- I'm sorry, I didn't mean any offense. I still can't express myself very well in English, you see. And I'm never sure what's acceptable to say and what isn't, so... Is that so? Because you sounded fluent enough when you were telling me what a blackguard I must be. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. I can't say that I blame you for thinking it, fella. It- it is a little strange, to be honest. Why you don't have a lawyer, I mean. That would be the fault of the Reaper. Sorry? Did he just say Reaper? Aye, the Grim Reaper of the Bailey. Lord... Uh, Lord Barak... Barak? Barak? Maybe Barak Van... Van Zeeks? Is that how you say it? Van Zeeks? Van Zeeks? Maybe Van Zykes? I don't know, Van Zykes. <laughs> He's the prosecutor. The prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Van Zykes stands for the prosecution, they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And to this day, in every single trial in which he has been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. What? 
So it's reached the, des the desperate situation. Where there's no one willing to stand in defense against the fella at all. You could say he's a living legend of the old Bailey. Goodness. Lord Barack Van, Z Van Zykes. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's Van Zykes, but I'm not sure. He must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor then. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madam. It's cursed. Cursed? What on earth? The defendant is summoned and his counsel. Please make your way into the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel. That would be me. Oh, tis time. Well then, fella, don't let me down. Uh, but, but I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Until you showed your face here. I've made up me mind, so I had. Sorry? I decided I'd have to defend myself in there. How, how would that have worked? But then you made an appearance a student of law, wouldn't you know? Tis no accident, I can assure you of that. Tis fate. So don't get cold feet now, please. I literally know nothing about the case, or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I can't just turn my back on him. Mr. Naruhodo, the man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes, something that Kazuma would never have allowed to happen. Counsel for the defense, what are you doing? If you're late for the start of the trial, you will lose your right to stand. I'll be right there. It's happening. It's happening. It's just the, the office meme. It's happening. Oh my god, it's happening. My first trial in a British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. Bitch me too, the fuck. So this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. The centuries of history in this place is palpable, isn't it? It's so different to the Supreme Court in Japan. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, yes, what? Your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I just can't help it. In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counsels for the prosecution and defense to declare their willingness to proceed. The prosecution is fully prepared. That must be the Reaper of the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense, you appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. But he asked if the defense was... Wait, but he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be further from ready if I tried. Those eyes please me. <laughs> and I forgot- I forgot about this guy. Like, he's on the cover. And I remember, like, him being, like, the edge worth, you know, of this, of this, um, game. And maybe the next one, too. I forgot about the whole Nipponese, though. <laughs> <laughs> because of Nipponese. They shroud your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild, clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quintessential, uh, quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Ugh, a cold shiver just ran down my spine, all the way to the tips of my toes. Now, Mr. McGilded. Yes, my lord. 
You stand accused of murder, a capital offense. You could be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this foreigner? As I've always said, my lord, tis a grand thing to give opportunities to the young. Even if the fellow is a student from some little island off in the Far East. It is not the... Is it not the British way to ignore the dangers dangers to y ye self and give these those less fortunate a fair chance? I'd like to think that acts of chivalry do the great British Empire proud. Listen to Mr. McGilded. What a fine gentleman London has in him. Did you hear where he donated 5,000 pounds to the government the other day? Mother, please may we go and play in McGilded Park? It seems as though everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcome news, and he certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised he couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Eloquently put, Mr. McGilded, and most laudable, and most laudable sentiments. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly to remind you that you six members of the public have been selected for your impartial impartial impartiality are you ready to proceed yes my lord if the task is to send rotters to the gallows where they belong i'm more than ready at the manor his lordship always says we should dispose of rubbish promptly naturally i agree ha any criminals here will soon be wishing they never set eyes on me I feel a chill. Oh, don't mind me, my dears. I'll just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts before my grandson. Uh, Mr. Naruhodo, those people are... The jury. Yes, that's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right. I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passed the sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. But how exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it'll become clear as the trial progresses. Yeah... Prosecutor Van Zykes. My lord. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you'd renounced your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes, five years have passed since I last spread my wings in, in this capacity. So, what brings you back? Is there some change of circumstance of which the court should be aware? I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So, the Reaper has been out of action for five years. Why did he have to choose today of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Naruhodo. As you wish, sir. The court nevertheless welcomes your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly. As your lordship is aware, this is a case of overwhelming simplicity. We must be the only ones in here who aren't aware. In the incident, wait, the incident took place in the late evening. Three days passed. The hour was some minutes after ten. The victim was a maker of building bricks known in the community as Thrice Fired Mason. <laughs> Sorry, Thrice? He was a very accomplished craftsman. The bricks he fired were said to be almost indestructible. The victim's corpse was discovered in an omnibus in service on the streets of London at the time. A dagger that had been a dagger that had been thrust into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. Here's the autopsy report from the investigating medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. I shall accept that and the photograph as evidence. And one further item of evidence. The prosecution wishes to submit these as well. And these are...
Good lord, is that blood? Yes, my lord. Seized by a policeman who arrived at the scene. These gore-soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. What? Mr. McGilded's gloves have blood on them? Yes, I will accept these as evidence as well. How did I get into this? I'm back to do a corner before I even started. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus, there were only two passengers traveling inside this ve his vehicle at the time. Only two? Obviously, one of the passengers was the deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other... was the accused, Magnus McGilded. I like his kind of dainty point. <laughs> like, the other ones are so aggressive now, he just kind of... <laughs> Hmm, well, rather dam damning circumstances, to say the least. Defendant, what say you? Well, of course, I have no recollection of such a thing. Mr. McGilded? To be sure, I rode that the omnibus that evening. But whenever I'm in a carriage, I'm taken, a, with, a, I'm taken with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to it. Are you claiming to have been asleep? Tis the motion of the carriage, my lord. Lil, 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 Lilton? Lilton. <laughs> Lilton, so it is. And when I open my eyes again. Oh, like little thing? Is that, was that like the lingo or like the accent? It was a desperate sight before me. The body of a man I'd never laid eyes on before in my life. In me life. Hmm. Now I ask yous, what good hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fella bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about me gloves now, was I? I reached out to, I reached out to give the man a hand. So the blood got on the gloves then after the man had been killed. Unfortunately, that statement of the drivers is what? Yeah, the state that statement of the drivers is only the beginning. What? That's not all of it. There were multiple witnesses to the precise moment at which the brickmaster was fatally stabbed. Or, oh, or dar, or dar. When the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage, and there were witnesses to the crime. This is not just a case of compelling evidence. It's the nail in the coffin for the accused. Hmm. Thank you, counsel. The circumstances of the crime have been made quite clear. I think we will hear the testimony from these witnesses first of all. Your wish is my command. Bailiff, bring the witnesses uh, witnesses in at once. Witnesses, your names and occupations. My name is well, everyone calls me Beppo. I I drive an omnibus in the East End. Bruce Fairplay. I'm a banker in the city. My name's First. Lady First. <laughs> I, I, I make hats for gents. Let's begin by confirming the facts. Three days ago, at a short time after 10 o'clock in the evening, all of you present in the stand were in an omnibus and witnessed the aforementioned incident. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Quite right. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. Very well, then. Let's proceed to your formal testimonies, please. Each of you will tell the court precisely what you saw. It it was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few custom I had few customers. I remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. Then, out of the blue, the accused just reached over and plunged a knife right into his guts. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did. Couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus, and then I, and then I saw it too. Hmm. 
Unambiguous testimony, I must say. Exactly, my lord. These men witnessed the incident in the omnibus with their own eyes. Um, I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Yes, counsel. Well, this testimony... Makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why not? Well, the incident took place inside a moving carriage, didn't it? As had been clearly stated from the outset, yes. Well, in that case... How could those two witnesses possibly have seen what happened? There's no way they could have seen the inside of a moving carriage. How quaint. I'd read that civil I'd, I'd read that civilization in the Eastern Island nation was a good century behind our own, but you're here in London yourself. Are you really so ignorant about our omnibuses? Huh? Tell me, my Nipponese friend, have you even traveled in an omnibus? Well, no. We um only arrived in London this morning. No matter. I've arranged for us to all see for, your, for ourselves, the actual scene of the crime, that is. What do you mean, the actual scene? A carriage is designed to be moved, after all. Presumably you understand that much. Um, yes. The omnibus in which his bloody, cr uh, his bloody, this bloody, bloody crime took place is here today, in this very building. Here? What? The entire thing? Bailiff. Bring forth the stricken omnibus. So that's an omnibus. THE omnibus. I can't believe they could bring something so enormous in here. Great Britain's courtrooms are amazing. As you can see, the omnibus is pulled by two horses and can carry up to eight passengers. Four passengers seated inside the enclosed cabin, and another four on the rooftop deck above. Every Londoner knows that the best views of the city's of the city's architecture and sights are to be had from a top from the top of an omnibus. And I should point out to our foreign guests that there is a skylight in the roof allowing a view of the interior from the seats above. Oh. A skylight. Oh! The penny drops at last, I see. These two gentlemen were occupying the rooftop seats on, these, on this omnibus when the murder took place. That is how they came to witness the grim incident. Through the skylight. Ugh. That makes perfect sense. Well, counsel, this is a first. In all my years behind the bench, I've never experienced the crime scene itself being brought into the courtroom. There are a number of important clues remaining inside the carriage. I would like to submit the omnibus itself as evidence. That is the prosecution's wish. Very well. I see no reason why not. This omnibus is hereby formally accepted as evidence. Can I, like, look at it? I can't believe it. The entire crime scene entered as evidence. Okay, hold on. Let's see if we can actually like look at it. Oh, we can look at it. We open it. Well, let's open the door and go inside, shall we? Ugh, the scene of a murder. It's horrible. That's blood that soaked into the seat. The victims, obviously. Yes, and that seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck. Would you really stab somebody in full view of the other passengers like that? Well, it was after dark, and there was a lamp on in here, so perhaps the culprit couldn't see anything outside through the skylight. Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem like it was a planned attack. It's quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yes, yeah, quite large enough to afford a good view in, into the cabin from the roof deck. And there doesn't appear to be a handle or, or catch of any description, so I suppose it can't be open from inside the cabin at least. 
Ah, that's a poster for the great exhibition that's due to start six months from now. There's a lot of focus being drawn to the Crystal Tower, the centerpiece of the whole exposition. Ooh, the Crystal Tower. It's under construction already, I believe. People all over London must be fizzing with excitement at the prospect of such a grand event. Ooh, I pressed the wrong button. The seat looks reasonably soft, but it's actually rather hard when you sit on it, and only and only just wide enough for two gentlemen to sit side by side, really. Of course, an English gentlewoman would be dressed in such finery. It would be quite impossible for her to climb up to the roof deck, so she would have to be se seated here. A woman in a kimono would have this would have the same problem. Women's clothes are very impractical, aren't they? The seat has a handle, it seems. This looks like all sorts of equipment that might be needed to keep the omnibus running. Feeding tubs, tools to repair wheels, blankets, horseshoeing tools. So it's a storage compartment for the coachman to keep his things, it seems. There doesn't seem to be any space for passengers to stow their luggage, that's for sure. Well, I don't imagine it would be very convenient for that purpose anyway. Ah, that's a poster for- oh, okay. It's another poster for it. <laughs> so, that's all that's here. I okay when I when I saw this like what the guy looked like with the the the, the Mr. McGill the guy I was like oh it's like ring it's like like the gears are turning like it was like oh yeah I have I have played this bit. But there's only like five chapters. Like if this was if this if this was two separate games like uh, would it be obvious that there was like another game afterwards? Cause I feel like I got all the way up to the fifth one, and I feel like there was like not really any closure, but I don't know, maybe maybe it's because everything happened like so fast. So this is the roof deck of the omnibus. Oh, you must have a wonderful view of London streets from up here. So people sit all the way up here on bitter winter nights with cold air rushing past them? And they have to pay money to do so? Ooh, I can't imagine how cold it must feel. That just made me think of something horrible. Can you imagine being dragged around the city in the freezing cold as a punishment? Perhaps that is the real price you pay to stay out late. I guess that's what we- that's all we get for now. Yes, Great Britain is simply extraordinary. I could help myself a lot by giving that omnibus a thorough examination, seeing as, that, as it's here. Let us continue with proceedings, then. Your cross-examination, Council. <laughs> Pray, don't expect this Nipponese stray to understand the intricacies of a British court's cross-examination rights. Alright, my first cross-examination in a British court. Focus, Ryunosuke. Focus. He should have done like the Apollo Justice. <laughs> I'm Apollo Justice and I'm fine! <laughs> should I save? Here, let me save. Here, because, because of the whole power outage thing, I'm gonna save in a separate slot just in case I lose like three hours of progress somehow. Hopefully it doesn't come to that, but I'm, it's just a just in case. Okay, it was the last bus of the evening, so I had few customers. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other. Okay, I mean, nothing wrong. I mean, we can still ask. Here, let's just do it. Yes, I think it was some time after 10, wasn't it? Oh, yes, sir. That's right, sir. Yes, ever so cold it was. Freezing, in fact. And you had four passengers on board at the time, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's right, sir. Not all traveling in the same parts of the bus. Yeah, uh, yeah, but of course, though, no. And there were no other passengers when the incident took place? No one alighted, for example? 
You're quite right with that, sir. No other passengers like that. No. None. So nobody fled the scene of the crime, then. I have to say, the boss insists on, on it running, he does, every evening, that the last bus of the day. But I... I do wonder sometimes if it's altogether worthwhile. Sorry to say. What do you mean by that? Well... What well, with it being so cold and everything, and only making 20 pence on the run, you see. Yes, I spend that much at the, at the pub on the way home, just, just trying to warm up again. And you saw them through the skylight in the roof of the carriage. That's right, when you sit up on the top deck, the window's right there at your feet. There was a lamp on inside, so I had a pretty good view. The two of them were wearing hats, and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. But there's not a shred of doubt in my mind that it was Mr. McGilded. How can you be so sure? Well, how can I put it politely? McGilded is a gentleman of rather small stature. I couldn't have mistaken him for anyone else. Let's not forget that when the vehicle came to a halt, the only people inside the enclosed cabin were the deceased Mr. Mason and Mr. McGilded. There's no room for doubt here. Ugh, I really wish there was. Then out of the blue, the accumulator him him in the bed. You actually saw the exact moment it happened. Didn't I already testify to that? Or our fair... What, are our fair dinkum hard working city bankers not considered trustworthy these days? Oh, oh no no, I, I didn't mean that. This is no good. I really got, got his back up. Perhaps you could just tell us what you saw in a little more detail if that's- My lord. Hmm? Juror number three, what's the meaning of this? My mind is made up, my lord. Completely and utterly made up. Made up about what? I don't like the stinking rich. Never have. They're always up to something or other that they shouldn't be. Every one of them. And that little leprechaun of a man is no exception. Well, he can't fool me. There's no point wasting time listening to any more of this. That's my opinion on the matter anyway. That's precisely what I was about to say. As the foreman of the jury, it's my duty to set a good example to my fellow jurors. What the... what is happening here? Let me see. Ah, oh, yes, it seems that's how the members of the jury give their verdicts. With fire? Apparently, yes. White for innocent and black for guilty. As the six members of the jury make up their minds about the case, one by one they each cast a ball of fire into the great scales of justice, as we saw a moment ago. So if those enormous scales fall completely to the black side, does that mean... Let's do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. Oh, now I'm even more worried than I was before. Very well. The court acknowledges the change in the jury's stance. Counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. This is a nightmare. I I'm wondering something though. We never really got to. Fi he never finished his. He never finished his story. I don't think. Whatever. Let's just. <laughs> He stabbed him, you say, and you were sitting up on the roof deck, were you? Yes, that's right, sir. I was up on the roof seats. I remember seeing the little gent sitting next to the fellow that was stabbed. I've been thinking about a new hat design, you see, so I was just gazing absentmindedly around. But then, then I happened to look down through the skylight. It, it was sticking right out of from his belly, that, that huge great knife. Hmm. A grim sight indeed. Ah, oh, that didn't help me at all. The jury looked like they're even more convinced my client did it than they were before. 
That appears to have, been, have made everyone even more dubious that Mr. McGilded is telling the truth. If only we had some evidence to counter their suspicions. Mr. First. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Is this the knife you saw? Oh, good grief. Yes, that's it. The very one, sir. Is... is that... Yes, Council. This is the blade that was driven into the victim's belly like a stake through the heart. That is a blade of considerable size, Council. It is. And furthermore, the scabbard is em emblazoned prominently with a certain initial. The letter M, which seems oddly familiar. Oh, please, no. M. For Magnus, perhaps? Or McGilded, possibly? Take your pick. It seems this particular big name in London made a magnificent mistake. Uh, but, but there are M's everywhere. Like, uh, like, yes. Like, like in Mason. This blade is far too extravagant for a poor brickmaker to have owned. No, this weapon of murder almost certainly belongs to the accused. Oh... Hmm, not conclusive, but certainly compel compelling, Council. The murder weapon. Okay, I think I can check. Uh, my lord, if you'll forgive the inter- Okay, for hold on. <laughs> I'm interrupting her just to see if we can't- Oh, d for Wumbo? Did you set it to Wumbo? An ornate letter M, undeniably Mr. Magnus McGilded's initial. And it's beautifully gilded, too. It must be very valuable, I should think. Oh, what is it? Look at this M. What, if you turn it upside down, it becomes a W. This could change everything. A W? Yes, this is one of those, you know, turnabout cases. I'm sure of it. I'm afraid I don't know at all, but what I am sure of is that this is an M. Oh, well, that idea was quickly quashed. That part is the sheep, isn't it? Are you alright? Hmm? Oh, sorry, yeah, I just don't really like blades. Oh. Those don't seem like the words of a man with a large katana slung from his waist. That's not a blade, that's Kazuma's soul. Anyway, there's no sense in delaying it. Oh, yeah, delaying it, let's see what the blade looks like. Ooh, that's a lot of blood. It surely is blood. The victims. Ugh, an Englishman's blood looks a lot like Japanese. Of a Japanese man's blood. Did you think it wouldn't? Sorry, it's just that we've only just arrived here in Great Britain. I'm finding it a little hard to adjust. Yeah, I understand. That's all that's okay. Unless there's like... No? No? Is it a key? Sometimes that was like, that's like a puzzle thing. It's a key. Nothing. This is definitely blood, isn't it? Not the most pleasant sight to be confronted with on our first day in London. Well, nothing will come of grumbling now. No. By the way, is Mr. McGilded right-handed? Yes, I believe so. He was toying with a coin in his right hand a little earlier. Oh, pity. If only he'd been left-handed. I think blood on either glove would be fairly incriminating, really. Anything else? Okay, the photo. Oh, I forgot. Okay, well, <laughs> I thought you could. Okay, what does this say? Okay, name thrice fired Mason. 54, bookmaker. Stabbed once in the abdomen with a knife whilst journeying in an omnibus. Died due to internal hemorrhaging resulting from the trauma. Ah, uh, juror number two, go on. Mr. McGilded is a pillar of society and a gentleman, and a gentleman's word should be uh, sacros sacrosanct. However, 
those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Wait, what are you about to do? Dispose of the rubbish! No. I don't wish to cause offense, but I do like to eradicate all traces of filth and grime. I have painstakingly typed every word uttered here today and cross-referenced all the facts. As such, I am now in a position to draw the only logical conclusion. Not again. That's four out of six jury members who proposed a guilty verdict. There are only two left. We've had it. Every time I press these witnesses for more information, I just make the situation worse. Nevertheless, what we need more than anything at the moment is more information. We're still very much in the dark. I suppose I'll just have to keep pressing the witnesses, knowing that more sparks will may well fly. We mustn't give up hope that we'll, that, uh, yeah, that we'll uncover something that will give us a way to fight back. But... Alright, I'll keep trying. I can't give up. I just need to keep calm and listen to the witnesses' statements again. So should I just press? Mata! Um, what exactly did you see? Oh, well, sir, that would be the passenger, sir. He has collapsed on the floor. And by passenger, obviously you are referring to the victim, Mr. Mason, the brickmaker. And, and then the other passenger had that knife in his hand, like this. By the other passenger, obviously you're re referring to the accused Mr. Magnus McGilded. And, and then the, he plunged it down like this, stabbing the other passenger in, in the belly. What? My lord, I wish to speak. Yes, juror number five, do I take it that you too... As the master of the London Guild of Coachmen, the idea of a murder being committed in one of the city's carriages is utterly abhorrent to me. It wouldn't be right to make a decision before hearing all the facts, though, I said to myself. But I've heard enough now. The horse has bolted, as they say. No, no, please, just keep an open mind a little. G now, now G, G up now, Silver Blaze, the finish is in sight. Beppo is a long-standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Oh, thank you, sir. You're too kind, sir. Oh, this is too unkind, sir. Which now means that five jurors agree to condemn this man. Madam Juror number six. Yes, dear, what can I do for you? You have heard the testimonies of the witnesses in the stand. Oh, yes, I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know. Then, pray tell, why are you yet to pronounce your leaning? Well, dear, the thing is, I'm a creature of habit, me. I always go to the park at around this time of day and sit on a nice bench and get on with my knitting. There's a lovely little park just near where I live. McGilded Park, it's called. The gentleman donated it to the city, you know, to put a smile on Londoner's faces, he said. I can't imagine such a fine young gentleman would have, would have it in him to take another man's life. He's always doing wonderful things for this city. Oh. That's right, a man like that wouldn't stab someone, surely. Mother, may we go to the McGilded Public, Li McGilded Public Library later and borrow some more books? How many Londoners live with, the with their heads in the clouds? Do you people not know? What kind of a man Magnus McGilded really is? What kind of a man is he? <laughs> a philanthropist, Magnus McGilded, has enough wealth to purchase the entire city he claims to value so highly. But where did all that wealth come from? Your client is a Shylock, sir. And one with the very darkest of souls. What? Stone and stone the crows. 
McGilded lends money to wait. McGilded lends money at extortionate rates of interest, so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When they default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've I've never heard any mention of that before. Your faculties haven't deser deserted you, I'm sure, madam. So has this thought not crossed your mind? Would a man wealthy enough to buy London in its entirety not have a carriage of his own? What possible reason could this man have have had to make use of a public omnibus service? Um, you're not saying that the victim, a poor brickmaker, had next to nothing to, s to his name, save considerable financial liability. It will come as no surprise that his creditor was the accused, Magnus McGilded. But let it also be known that the very day Mr. Mason was killed was the final payment date for his debt. Goodness gracious, or good gracious, the brickmaker was destitute. He had lost his house, he had not a shilling with which to repay his debts. And in the end, this pitiful soul had the very last thing he owned taken away from him, his life. By the merciless philanthropist pretender, Magnus McGilded. I don't believe it. If I might add something briefly, Miss Susato. You claim that the victim had been lent money by Mr. McGilded, but where is the evidence to support your claim? Oh yeah, where'd that come from? <laughs> Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollow chalice in a court of law. Aha! There it is! Lord Van Zeek's hollow chalice! Oh, I called him Van Zeek's. Van Zeek's? Van... yeah. How can this be considered acceptable? But I find myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from the Far East could show great courage, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. Oh. As, as judicial assistant to the defense, I am simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. This is the debtor's ledger, which details all monies loaned by the, by the accused. You will find the victim's name clearly recorded inside. Oh. Allow me to present this ledger as evidence. And pray forgive the discourtesy of raising my chalice in a toast to the enigmatic East at the same time. A marvelous toast, Council. I will gladly accept this new evidence. Ah, yes. 20 guineas. The victim owed a considerable sum. Okay, let's see if we can't open this. Oh, this point. What? I missed it. <laughs> Oops. Oh dear, do you really think we ought to look inside? Well, it's not as though we know any London's gentry personally, is it? Apart from our great detective friend, perhaps? Actually, I wonder. I assure you, we will not find Mr. Sholm's name inside. Well, let's see what we find. Gosh, it's crammed full of gentlemen's names, isn't it? Well, I suppose they're probably not all gentlemen at all, are they? After all, not everyone in this country is well off. Oh, goodness. What is it? Look at this. Do you see the name here? Bruce Fairplay. Should that mean something to me? It, it does sound strangely familiar, actually. Bruce Fairplay, the witness testifying at this very moment. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 the banker. Why is his name in here? Oh, he borrowed 20 guineas, did he? And look, the repayment date is fast approaching. It's possible that this is just a coincidence, of course, but this could be very useful information. Was that it? Yeah. Anything in the back? Nope. And the accused made quite certain he had ample uh, recompense. Well, it would seem I've... I've had the wool pulled over my eyes. Regrettably, madam, that is the modus operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little part, too. What a scoundrel. Still... 
Maybe it's all for the best. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Let's think about the... I don't stand for nonsense. That was it. The last juror's decision. Uh, according to this encyclopedia of British law, when all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended, and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. The final verdict. It's over then. Oh! There's a footnote, though. A footnote? However, the defense... All six members of the jury are now in agreement in this case. Allow me to convey my respect for your swift and righteous decision. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial by delivering my final verdict. I trust there are no objections. Miss Tusato, just tell me one thing. Oh, yeah? You were in the middle of saying something before. The footnote in your encyclopedia of British law. However, the defense? What did it say next? Oh, oh yeah, of course. Uh, one moment. When all members of the jury have concluded that the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are surrendered in the time of the day, then the footnote says, however, the defense has the right to demand a summation examination of the jurors at this point. Uh, a summation examination? A summation examination? From which century has that tome you have there been resurrected? Oh. Judging from the binding, I would say that book is at least 50 years old. Any modern text on British law wouldn't even give such an acquainted procedure a mention. It's a relic, long forgotten, and certainly no longer practiced. So, you're out of luck. Oh. What even is it, Miss Usato? This so-called summation examination. Oh, um, one moment and I'll read about it. God, we keep having to pull this book out. You would demand the right to a procedure before you even understand what it entails. Hmm, typical Nipponese. All right, Mr. Naruhodo, I think I understand. It seems that under this procedure, we would be able to appeal to the members of the jury. To do what, exactly? Appeal to them to change their leaning and reverse their decisions. And it says here that... If successful, the proceedings of the trial must be resumed. Make them reverse their decisions? Yes, in times gone by, bar bar barristers, barristers would use a summation... Oh, what? I don't know. <laughs> Words. <laughs> Sometimes they're too difficult. Would use a summation examination to attempt to influence the jury's decision. But that procedure became something of a formality with no practical benefit, really, so it rather fell out of use. I wonder why. Because it was devoid of purpose. Changing just one member of the jury's mind would be hard enough, let alone several. No self-respecting defense uh, bar barrister would even assert ha his right to try in this day and age. Still. I don't see any mention of the procedure actually being formally revoked. What are you suggesting? I'm suggesting that although it may be a acquainted and largely forgotten, it isn't yet extinct. What do you think? A summation examination. Our last possible option. Do we assert our right or just admit- No, assert your right. The defense wishes to assert its right to a summation examination, my lord. London is the capital city of the most powerful nation on earth. We have a duty to the world to exemplify the very highest standards of judicial procedure. Summation examinations are an embarrassment that should remain buried. But if it's our right, then it's our right. I believe it would prove vital in this trial. 
The defense's petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the salvation examination. This is madness. Foreman, are you and the remainder of the jury ready? Eh? Oh, well, uh, I'm not. Uh, there was no mention of this in the letter I received, you see, so... All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached their decision. On what grounds? You must all justify your decisions and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Well, my lord, you're rather putting us on the spot. This is most irregular. No mention of this was made before. Er, whatever. I really don't hold with all this justifying lark. That seems to have thrown the jurors off. It seems none of them have experienced this before. Alright then, the summation examination. A defense procedure no practicing lawyer has attempted for years, is it? Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for to turn this trial around. So be it then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you to state the grounds on which you find the defendant Magnus McGill the guilty of this most serious crime. Yeah.